from the Penn Libraries. So our last faculty speaker this morning um, is Gwendolyn DeVoy Shaw. Gwendolyn teaches in the history of art, and we've actually been um, working with Gwendolyn's classes for many semesters now. The list of technology tools they use is really long. I remember Instagram, Prezi, web design, blogs, visualization, PowerPoint, I'm sure there's more. Uh, I've been inspired by how um, her students have really connected with objects in the museum and have been able to use objects that they can physically touch with objects that they can present online. So please come up. Okay, well, I'm having such a fantastic time. It's, um, you know, uh, in the humanities and in SAS, sometimes we never hear from our colleagues in other schools, and this is really fantastic for me, very exciting. So um, all of uh, the, everything that I'm going to show is on my page here on the Canvas site for the symposium. So you can find these links um, here on my page. Um, and I just want to talk about um, working with students in exhibition practice. A lot of my classes are curatorial seminars. I teach about one every year. And I've collaborated with a number of institutions around Philadelphia, but particularly on campus. I've worked with the Penn Museum, the Institute of Contemporary Art here at Penn, uh, the, Arthur, the Arthur Ross Gallery, the Philadelphia Museum of Art to do exhibitions. And each one has been different, and each engagement that the students have had with technology has been different, and the ways that we've been able to archive it or not archive it um, have been interesting and challenging for me. Um, last year, uh, I, I was working on an exhibition called Represent, um, colon, Af uh, 200 Years of African American Art. This is an exhibition that's going to open in January at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. And I worked with two graduates, two groups of graduate students, four students total, um, to help me conceive the topic, um, to conceive the exhibition, and for them to actually mount uh, full proposals for exhibitions if they were the curators, if they were the ones who were going to actually be heading uh, the project. And in order to present their ideas to the staff of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, they uh, each group did a prezi. And um, I have the two prezis um, linked here, and you can see the differences in them. Both groups of students started with the two same things. Um, a floor plan for the gallery, just like a regular kind of blueprint floor plan, um, and then a group of images that um, they worked with uh, to construct their exhibition. The first exhibition was called Ain't I a Woman, and it focused on uh, African-American women artists and images of black women in the collection um, of the museum. And so you can see here the floor plan that they began with, and then just little um, uh, JPEG cutouts of the images that they worked with. And so one of the groups, you know, and this is the beauty of Prezi, is that it allows you to kind of fly through the space. In the past, I had used um, PowerPoint uh, to do presentations, you know, which is much more linear, much more kind of static. But with Prezi, the students really kind of placed their objects in the gallery, and they were able to give uh, myself and the curators an idea of where each object would be, what other objects would be next to it, and how they would function and make an argument for the exhibition. This is the second one. Um, and here we go, looking forward, looking back. Um, and again, the same, uh, the same floor plan layout, um, different objects, some of them the same, some of them a little bit different. Um, the students uh, were able to kind of think about the space and how they wanted to put um, work within it. As they gave their presentation, they talked about the individual objects. Um, and it was really, really neat to see how different the presentations were and how convincing they could be giving this presentation to uh, professionals uh, in the museum. Now, a few years back in 2006, I did an exhibition with the Penn Museum called Trouble in Paradise, the Art of Polynesian Warfare. And the students worked with war clubs that were in the collection of the... Um, of, uh, of the museum. They had been pre-chosen, a group of them had been pre-chosen by myself and by the keeper um, of that collection. Um, and then they did a website that, uh, uh, that they built themselves using Dreamweaver. And I was just looking at the dates for, for this project because this, this show opened in spring of 2006, which was when Weigel opened. And I don't think I did it with Weigel. I think SAS Computing helped me um, to do this project. And when you look at it right now, it's so kind of like web 
you know, 1.0. <laughs> but um, but the students built this themselves. They built, um, they made these maps with um, close-ups on the objects. Um, trips that we took, we were able to go to London and to Hawaii. You can see they were mostly interested in the beach, but um, uh, in order to uh, gather information um, for the exhibition, they did a video um, that chronicled Where's our video now? I guess it's been taken down. Um, they did a video. They posted their uh, uh, their bibliography, um, et cetera. Now, the Penn Museum was not interested in having student product on their website at the time. So we were not able to host it on the Penn Museum site, which was a disappointment at the time. But we put it, as you can see through the URL, we put it on the Art History Department website. And because of that, I still have it. Um, and that's great. So while I was disappointed initially, I'm now very happy that, um, that we ended up doing that. Let me go back here. Um, and the last two exhibitions that I did with university uh, museums, um, arts institutions, um, I, was not, I, was, um, I was allowed to post student websites, but after the exhibition was done, they disappeared from the sites. The institutions took them down before I was able to archive them. They could not recover them. And all the student work was lost. So this was a frustration for me. Um, and it taught me a lesson. And I should have learned it after the first time this happened, but I didn't, um, that, uh, that I need to do that archiving um, on my own. So uh, uh, for Samba Sassau, Afro-Brazilian Art and Film, that was at the Arthur Ross Gallery in 2012, it now lives on Facebook. The students did a number of social media platforms for this show. They have a Facebook page, and they also did um, did YouTube videos, and some of them um, no longer. Don't ask me again. Thank you. Um, yes, it's one, one, two, five. Thank you. Um, they did YouTube videos, but they also on their channel. Um, uh, they posted the videos that were in the exhibition um, that they had um, edited as part of the project. These were reviews of, of films, uh, Brazilian films. Um, and some of them, you know, in the two years that they've been up there have gotten 12,000, 16,000 views. So, um, you know, uh, eventually, you know, or inevitably, this became kind of a public service um, thing. Um, and then the last show that I did was uh, uh, with the Institute uh, the Institute of Contemporary Art. It was called Each One As She May, like in Reichen to Kursmacher. Um, and this was an exhibition of very contemporary art. And again, the ICA took down um, our web presence after the show. And so it really kind of lives on um, in the Flickr site that was put together for it by the Arts and Culture Initiative. Um, the, Arts and Cu the Arts and Culture Initiative here at Penn is a really fantastic thing, headed by my colleague, Karen Beckman. Um, if you're interested in reading about it, in this week's Almanac, there's a, there's a a really great um, kind of summary of what um, Karen, who's actually right here, um, was able, uh, has been able to do in the last year, um, last couple of years. So the show lives on in Flickr um, and also in, uh, in a really wonderful Vimeo um, that was done for us by Arts and Culture um, with the students. Um, here's one of the artists, Glenn Ligon, and myself peeking out um, in the background. Um, so these are just a few of the ways that uh, I've used different kinds of technology with my students. The last thing I want to show is uh, the Google Art Project, which I'm using this semester with my Art History 278, which is a 50-person, uh, uh, 50 undergraduates um, in a lecture class. Google Art Project uh, has worked with um, different museums across the world to make really high-quality digital um, uh, scans of art objects so that, stu so that anybody, anywhere, can enjoy them and go very close into a work of art like the Gross Clinic, uh, which is on view at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Um, I've asked my students this semester, I think, for the final exam to um, make their own uh, uh, gallery using the Google Art Project. Um, these are really great. You can pull images from a variety of, uh, from a variety of museum sites, put them into uh, galleries, and you can also do fun things with them where you, for example, can compare um, objects. Close that, go up. Oh, it's not going to let me do it right now. Um, where you can compare objects, you can drag them into a little place, and then you can zoom in and out of them closely. And for somebody who works with images, this, 
images, this is great. But you could also use Google Art Project, I would think, if you had a theme that you wanted to look at, um, some kind of a topic, and you could pull images from all over the world. There are thousands of images um, that are available. And the, um, the user galleries um, are uh, available. You can see how new this, uh, this process is. Um, there are just 33,000 galleries up here right now. So this is really a very kind of um, emerging thing that, that Google is offering us through their Cultural Institute. So thank you very much for your time.